Hello everybody and welcome to the WrestleDude YouTube channel for another review, this time for Marvel's Loki series from Disney+. Plus. The finale just wrapped up the other day and I got to watch it as soon as possible, like literally as soon as I woke up I got on there and saw the episode was up, so I watched it. And now that the series is finally done, I can go through and give my thoughts on it. So let me know in the comment section below before I get started with my opinions. Let me know in the comment section uh, what you thought of the show and if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts, you know, kind of get the conversation rolling, you know. But as for uh, if I enjoyed the show... I did. I did. <laughs> I teased you there for a second. I, I really enjoyed the show. I thought it was very fun. All of the Marvel Disney Plus shows up to this point have been very, very good in their own ways. Uh, they've all had uh, some problems, uh, some more than most, uh, but, you know, even with problems, you know, things can be very, very entertaining. Uh, and this was one of them. Uh, I, I couldn't really think of, like, a lot of problems. The, one glaring thing that kind of kept popping up, and I'll get the, the this negative out of the way just because it doesn't really ruin the show for me that much, is that there were some points where I could kind of see the CGI it didn't really seem polished in some spots you know like i kind of tell it was like a giant green screen or or whatever but i mean that's kind of the issue that you run into sometimes especially with superhero movies there's a lot of cgi going on and it's something to expect with a show like this where there's definitely going to be a lot of cgi involved uh i i feel like the finale uh did really good you know the whole building at the end of time on the rock i thought the cgi for that looked really good so uh, i guess if you're gonna have a lot of work go into cgi uh for that um at least the finale episode is the perfect place to to do that i guess uh you know uh, I talk about CGI there so much just because I've been watching a lot of uh, Corridor Crews uh, videos where they break down CGI and stuff like that, so it's interesting. Uh, now that whenever I watch stuff, I kind of keep an eye out for, like, CGI and stuff like that. Um, I was kind of interested to see how this show would kind of write a new Loki because this is kind of... Uh, we, we had the Loki in the MCU before that got killed by Thanos, and he had his own arc where, like, he slowly became a good guy. And that happened over, like, more and more movies. And then this is another Loki that kind of gets to the same point. Well, maybe a different point. But he does it through his own TV show after getting the Tesseract in Endgame. And then going off into his own branch timeline. And they kind of catch him up uh, at the beginning. You know, they kind of show all the, like, flashes of, like, what his life should could have been if he stayed behind and when he gets killed by Thanos it kind of sees that he sees the development with Thor and stuff like that so I guess that kind of catches him up to speed on that kind of stuff don't know if that really uh would affect him too much who knows uh I'm sure his relationship with uh Sylvie throughout this show definitely changes that which Sylvie I thought it was really awesome, uh, or Lady Loki, whatever you want to call her. Uh, I thought she did really awesome, looked really cool. Uh, Owen Wilson's Mobius, I thought was really awesome, although, you know, we never got him on a jet ski, and he never said wow throughout the entire series, so what was the point of having him anyway? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I thought it was very awesome. Uh, Ravona, great. Uh, Hunter B-15 was awesome. Uh, even one of the side characters, Casey, with his little comment about fish, I thought that was very, very fun. Hopefully, with how this show, uh, or this season ended, uh, maybe next time he will see a fish, which will be pretty cool for him to see. Who knows? Maybe he'll become a fish. Maybe in an alternate timeline, he was a fish, and then they brought him to the TV and then turned him into a human. Who knows? Uh, but let's, let's cut to the chase here. Let's cut to the finale. We had all this stuff, you know, who was behind the TVA. It turns out the timekeepers were, uh, robots and all this stuff. And then Sylvie and, uh, Loki go to the void and they meet classic Loki by Richard E. Grant, which his sort of sacrifice death scene kind of, I'm not gonna lie, got me a little bit emotional. I, I think he played it very, very well, uh, especially even for being in such a weird, like, 
costume. He was like in the sort of costume that Wanda and Vision were for in WandaVision for the Halloween episode, like their classic costumes, but it looks like a crappy uh, <laughs> Halloween costume. But then they beat Elioth, they enchant it, and then they get to the end of time, which is where they meet He Who Remains. And before that, we got uh, probably the greatest jump scare in Marvel uh, history thus far with Miss Minutes just coming out of nowhere with like the buggy eyes, like, hi, y'all. <laughs> like, uh, my freaking heart jumped <laughs> when she came out of nowhere, which I guess was kind of the point, meaning for you to be kind of afraid of her. But yeah, we get to the Citadel, we go in, and we meet Jonathan Majors as He Who Remains, which uh, is a different character from the comic books, but in the show, this is a new or a different version of one Kang as in Kang the Conqueror, who Jonathan Majors was cast to play Kang the Conqueror in the upcoming Ant-Man 3 uh, movie, Quantum Mania. Uh, so that's awesome. But we get a first taste of him here. I don't think he'll act the same in Quantum Mania. I think we're going to see multiple Kangs. This was just one of them. This is the last Kang who remains, which is why they call him or Miss Minutes calls him He Who Remains, and he basically runs the Citadel, he runs the flow of time. I thought he did awesome here. I've never really seen anything that Jonathan Majors has been in, but for this being my first experience seeing him, I thought he did very cool. And I thought I picked up on a detail uh, with the apple. It looked like the apple just kept growing back, you know, like how kind of how Doctor Strange used time to turn back the clock on like that apple and make it rotten and then make it ripe again. I, I feel like I saw Jonathan Majors eat that apple like completely like three different times. So I don't know if maybe I was just seeing things or if that was true. But either way, I thought it was a really cool detail. And then they get down to it and he says that either they can kill him and unleash all the other evil Kangs around, which is why he's been pruning the timeline so he can keep all the evil Kangs from like creating this multiversal war they can either kill him and let all those evil kings loose or loki and sylvie can run the tva and let him kind of i guess retire and sylvie denies this loki tries to stop her and explains to her that he just doesn't want to see her get hurt they kiss and then sylvie shoves him back through a time door to the tva and then she kills him so sylvie Thank you, Sylvie. You just spawned Multiverse of Madness and a bunch of other movies and stuff like that. So I appreciate you, Sylvie, for giving us all that. In hindsight, she's probably going to look at it as a stupid decision. But, um, yeah, this this is already an awesome start. I love the visual of, like, the big white line in the background, like, branching off into multiple uh, timelines. And this is definitely a cool way to lead into the Marvel What If show. Uh, I think that'll be awesome. Obviously, like I said, it'll be leading into Multiverse of Madness. Uh, people are saying it'll probably lead into Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, there's plenty of... If you want to stretch it that far, uh, there's plenty of people that say this could be how they introduce Wolverine and Deadpool and the X-Men and stuff like that. Who knows? We'll have to see as time goes on. But, yeah, at the end of the show, uh, I will say... At first viewing and like immediate reactions to the finale, to the like the final shot, it's low key in the TVA. He finds Mobius and Hunter B15 and he explains to them about um, he who remains, and then they just act like they've never seen him before. So Loki has been transported to a different TVA, and then he sees that Kang the Conqueror's statue is like in there. So immediate thoughts to that, as soon as it cut to black and the credits started to roll, my immediate thoughts were, really, that's it? That's how you're going to end the season or whatever? Uh, but after more time of thinking of it, I think that was a really cool ending. It was just kind of, you know, uh, I, I think maybe I was expecting more of a big bum bum finale kind of thing because honestly uh, like with falcon and the winter soldier we got the big fight finale with wandavision we got a big fight finale this wasn't we we had one big fight and it wasn't even really that big it was sylvie and loki kind of fighting but most of this finale especially confronting the villain most of this finale was really just sitting down and talking so uh, maybe that's why it, it felt kind of different to me but um upon thinking about it more i think it did really work uh, really well it was very entertaining for me 
And yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. There was a post credit scene, which I'm sure a lot of people might be mad that we didn't get something more of a post credit scene, because there was one post credit scene and it confirmed that Loki is getting a season two, which some people had already known, so maybe that's why they felt let down, because they were like, oh, we already know it was having a season two, show me something else, but... Hey, who knows? Uh, but yeah, overall, very fun show. If I'm going to rank all the Marvel TV shows thus far, I'm going to go number one, WandaVision, number two, Loki, and number three, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And it's weird that I have Falcon and the Winter Soldier at number three, because usually, like, spy superhero movies are kind of some of my favorites. Like, my top five uh, movies in the MCU right now are... Endgame, The Winter Soldier, Civil War, Black Widow, and The Hulk. And a lot of those are sort of spy movies, or at least the majority of them are considered spy movies. Um, I would kind of consider Falcon and the Winter Soldier as like a spy TV show mixed with superhero elements and stuff like that. But, you know, they compared to Loki and WandaVision and just how the scope of the MCU is being blown up because of those shows, I think that's why I like them even more. WandaVision especially, uh, I think what tipped it over the top for me was like those first three episodes with kind of the TV sort of uh, aesthetic in each of those different eras of television. I think that kind of made it a little bit more fun for me. Uh, also, the whole mystery of kind of piecing the clues together and stuff like that. With Loki, as time went on, you could kind of put things together a little bit more especially considering the setting that maybe the timekeepers or kang was involved with wandavision everyone was kind of pointing towards one thing I'm not gonna say his name because then <laughs> comment section is gonna go crazy but um yeah i i just thought wandavision was the best one thus far and i'm very excited for what if coming when is it in august i think i think that'll be a very fun anthology show and who knows uh, they could say that this is connected from uh what happened in the events of loki uh I'm just excited that we got so much Marvel over the past couple of months. Uh, we got Black Widow, we got WandaVision, we got Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we got this. We got the little teaser with Deadpool and Korg, I thought that was funny. And then coming up we have Spider-Man in December, we have uh, What If in, I think, August. It's it's a fun time to be a Marvel fan, and it's definitely going to get a whole lot more crazy now that we have the multiverse, thanks to Sylvie. And I'm interested to see where they go with Season 2 of Loki. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys want to see for Season 2 of Loki. I at least want to see Owen Wilson either on a jet ski or at least have him say wow. Just once. Just once. That's all I want. It's just Owen Wilson to say wow in Loki Season 2. But as for Season 1, I give it a thumbs up.